What if there were rules you could follow to ensure your boat restoration was successful? Hi, I'm Joe, and welcome to Motor City Boat Works. Let's get to work. Welcome back to the works. You know, I often get emails from people asking about their various boat restoration projects. They want to know if this boat project would be a good idea or this restoration isn't going to work out the way they want. They ask me for advice about how to ensure that their boat building or boat restoration project goes smoothly. I always have to remind them, you've got to pay attention to the 10 rules of amateur boat restoration. Oh, here we go. What's this guy talking about now? These rules were handed down to me some 30 years ago when I first started messing about with old boats. Some of them might seem kind of obvious, but some of us need the obvious stated. Me? These are not all of the rules that you should be following when you're attempting an old boat restoration, but they are the basics and they'll serve you well if you can just remember to keep them in mind. This list makes three assumptions up front. First, that you want to restore an old fiberglass boat. Two, that you have a budget to actually work on the boat. You've got some money set aside. And three, you have a place where you can do the work over a period of time. The first rule of boat restoration is choose wisely. Talk to me, brother. Now we will eventually talk about this in another episode, but by their very nature, boats have hidden expenses. A free boat is never free. And when you're choosing your boat, you need to take into consideration the cost, the size, the weight, the dimensions. All of these things are a factor in choosing the boat that you're gonna restore. Look for a boat that's gonna give you what you want when it comes time for you to actually use it. Don't choose a powerboat if you'd really like to have a traditional sailboat. If you choose poorly, you're dooming your restoration from the start. Rule number two, don't polish a turd. What? There are many boats, both sail and powerboats, that should not be restored. They were garbage when they were made, and they're still garbage today. Fiberglass is an amazing material, but some boats were poorly conceived from the factory. And over time, with no care and a lot of neglect, they just become worthless. It takes too much to bring them back to any form of what they might have been. If you're thinking of undertaking a boat restoration, you've got to weigh your time and energy versus your money and the overall condition of the boat that you're thinking about working on. Now, it's not my place to say which boat is a good project, which one should never have it been attempted. But do some research in the early stages of your boat restoration and really think about, ask yourself, am I polishing a turd? Rule number three, the parts that you put back into the boat when you're doing your restoration, they should be proportional to the value of the boat. I can see that. You don't want to buy a boat for $500 and then put $50,000 worth of electronics back into it. It just doesn't make any sense. Keep the parts and the cost of the equipment that you're putting back into the boat proportional to its value. This can be a real challenge because oftentimes you're working on your boat project and you realize, hey, I'd really like to have this product or this material or this item in the new boat, but frankly, the cost is too high. It's prohibitive. It just kind of throws your whole budget out of whack. This was the case in the non-skid for my pocket trawler. I really liked some of the different sorts of faux teak non-skids, but frankly, they're too expensive and I had to stick with something that was more in line with my budget and purpose. Lesson number four, you've got to plan early for finishing. Listen to the man. I talked about this in an earlier episode where I was working on the interior of the forward cabin of my pocket trawler. You really need to plan ahead and think 
early on in your boat restoration, what steps need to be taken to ensure that you can do your finishing at the end of the boat project? Oftentimes, there's a lot of fine sanding, some very detailed work insofar as preparing a surface for paint or working on fiberglass to ensure that it can take gel coat at a later date. If you don't plan ahead early on, you may get to the end of the boat restoration when it's time to begin your finishing process, you know, where you kind of get everything just right and you're going to realize that, man, you didn't put in the hours that were necessary to get a good final product at the end of the line. Now, your finish doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be Concord quality. It's not going to look like something that came from the factory. You've probably seen my video where I talk about the 10-foot rule of amateur boat building. You want it to look good from about 10 feet away. But nevertheless, you've got to plan ahead early to ensure that you can get to that level of finish down the road. Rule number five, you need to follow the accepted standards for boat building and boat restoration. Seems kind of obvious. It goes without saying that there are proper ways to do things in boat building and boat restoration. You've probably heard of the ABYC, American Boating and Yachting Council. It's an organization that has come up with minimum standards for boat building. Whenever possible, you should follow their guidelines. It'll really keep you out of trouble. Their guidelines cover things like electrical, propulsion systems, plumbing standards in boats. There's a minimum standard you should be following. You just can't wing it. ABYC standards will also tell you the type of materials you should be putting into your boat. I'll give you an example. When you're rewiring your boat, you can't just go to a DIY big box store and bring home a roll of household wire in order to restring your boat. There's a standard for the type of wire that needs to go inside a boat to be used in a marine environment. It can be expensive trying to follow these guidelines. The ABYC rules, well, they're several hundred dollars just to look at them. You've got to use common sense. These rules are in place and required for commercial and professional boat builders. As an amateur, you should be trying to follow them as best you can. Rule number six, whenever possible, you want to try and reuse the original equipment that came with the boat. Oh yeah. Oftentimes this material is better quality than what you can buy on the market today, especially if it's an older boat. With the exception of electronics or maybe lighting within the last 10 years, a lot of items on old boats, well, they stay the same over decades. Things that are made out of metal, stainless steel, bronze, and some aluminum can be easily refurbished and reused. You don't need to put new cleats on an old boat. Plastics often don't last in a marine environment. So carefully choose which ones you're going to try and refurbish, which ones you'll reuse. Rule number seven. Whenever possible, try and source your raw materials and equipment for the boat wholesale. I hear you. You're preaching to the choir. Try to stay away from marine chandlery. I have nothing against marine chandleries or big box marine stores or discount marine houses online. The only problem I have is when they try to charge me three and four times what an item normally costs simply because it has the word marine on it or it has a marine boating application. I hate when that happens. So whenever possible, I encourage people, try and source your raw materials for your boat restoration projects wholesale. Try and get them from the original source of supply for your plastics and composites. Try and get them from a local distributor. For your raw stainless steel and other metals, we'll try and order it from a discount house online. Number eight, fix it when you find it. That's exactly what I need. As you progress through your boat restoration, well, you're going to find problems and issues that need to be addressed. It's an old boat after all. You need to go ahead and fix those things as you come across them. 
don't wait to the end of the boat restoration to go back and say, oh, I'm going to fix this thing that I forgot to deal with early on. You're just going to make a mess and end up having to redo a lot of the hard work that you've already done. Fix your problems when you find them. Number nine, personalize your boat. We've already established that none of us amateurs are doing Concorde quality work. So you may as well go ahead and personalize your boat make it something special that you're proud of and you're happy to see every time you take it out and use it. I often hear well-meaning individuals discourage those of us that are actually restoring old boats. They say things like, don't paint your hull, don't do that modification, don't tear out your bathroom and install a proper size head. They like to throw around the word Frankenstein as though you're somehow gonna change an old boat into something that no one would want. No one's buying your old boat. And if they did wanna buy an old boat, there's a dozen other ones that look exactly the same. Customize your boat the way you want it. If you want a red boat, make your boat red. If you want a boat that's all shiny and glossy, well, spend the time and make it shiny and glossy. Do what makes you happy not what you think everyone else would really like to see. Number 10, no matter what, maintain momentum. That would be amazing, tell me about it. You gotta stay motivated. Boat restoration and boat building projects are really huge undertakings. When I started my boat building channel, I had this idea that I wanted to show some of the details and nuances of amateur boat building and amateur boat restoration. Things that were not being shown elsewhere on YouTube. Over the course of making these episodes, it's become obvious to me that there's a larger story about what it takes to stay motivated and actually get your boat built. You've got to be dedicated devoted to the idea of completing your boat restoration project. Even if you're working on the smallest rowboat, the tiniest pocket sailboat, these are large and complicated projects and they really require a lot of dedication and a lot of personal motivation. Don't quit, keep going, maintain momentum, see the project through and finish your boat restoration. I promise you, if you follow these simple rules, you'll be well on your way towards having a successful boat restoration. I know this was a brief episode, but I think it's important so that everyone is kind of on the same sheet of music. If you're new to the channel and you're wondering what other projects we've got going on inside the Boatworks, be sure to check out the Albin 27 playlist. It covers all the episodes of all the work that I've done so far on the boat. Over the next 18 to 24 months, we'll begin laying in the systems to my pocket trawler. We're gonna be putting in the electrical, the plumbing, and all of the furniture will get permanently installed. At some point, the boat is gonna be repowered with a new inboard diesel engine. This is really gonna be something that you wanna check out. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for stopping by the works. We'll see you next time. Stay motivated. Motor City Boat Works is now on Patreon. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider supporting the channel. My commitment to you is that every dollar from every Patreon will go solely towards doing stories on real amateur boat building, real amateur boat restoration, and stories of boat motivation. These episodes would not be possible without your support. Thank you. If you like these videos, please hit the subscribe button. These videos would not be possible without your support.